In verse number 24, we'll begin reading in Romans 8. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for, for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he, has, and he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them also uh, he also called, and whom he called, them also he justified, and whom he justified, them, also, uh, them he also glorified. What shall we say to those things? If God be for us, who can be against us? I read a little further than I intended, but it's all good. It's just good. So I want to preach a couple of times we hear about these things, about things. And I want to preach on how things work, how things work. Father, we love you. We thank you for your word. And Lord, we just pray that you bless now your reading and preaching of the scriptures. In Jesus' name, with thanksgiving, amen and amen. amen. And you can be seated. How things work. Even as a child, I was a reverse engineer. Which just means I didn't build stuff, but I took, tore plenty of stuff up. <laughs> took things apart. I could identify a Phillips screw, and a, every Phillips head screw needed a Phillips head screwdriver to take it out and see what it was holding together. So all of our furniture didn't stay together real good. Uh, I took apart a bunch of radios and stereos and things. They didn't always go back together just right. And even if they did, the cabinets of them were a little more rickety than they had been before. And I uh, like to take stuff apart. I like to know how things work. Uh, I was a kid. We were latchkey kids. We didn't know we were latchkey kids. We just, we just thought we were kids that had a lot of freedom. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't know how that was scary back in the 70s. You know, we just, in the 80s, we just kind of did our own thing. We woke up. Our parents were gone to work. We'd get home from school. Our parents weren't home from work. Um, uh, if we happen to have a telephone, then we might get a phone call that we need to make our own supper and get ourselves to bed when it was time if our parents were working multiple jobs, which they often did. And um, so left with a lot of freedom and a few tools, uh, we got to explore how a lot of things work. One of the things we had to figure out real quick was uh, how our bicycle worked. Yes, sir. Yeah, man. Today, all the kids, they keep coming up and they're like, hey, Dad, can you, can you put the chain back on? Hey, Dad, can you... Put them my, my handlebars or this and that. Man, I'm telling you what, by the time we were seven or eight, we, uh, we, we could field strip a bicycle and put it back together pretty quick just because there was no one else to do it and we didn't want to be stuck at home. It's just good to know how things work. As you get older and you get a car, you know, most of the time you just think you stick a key in and hit the gas and you go around. That works for a little bit until your car starts making funny noises. Most of the time I could fix it just by turning up the radio and that would be fine for a while until it broke altogether. But, you know, it just helped when you just started hearing a belt squeak. If you knew you could untighten one little part and tighten it up a little bit or just get a bar of soap and boop, boop, you know, put that on there a little bit, make, make it shut up for a minute. And so just knowing how things work, knowing how to change a tire, knowing how to check the oil, knowing how to pump gas, those are things that a lot of people don't know how to do today. I'm actually shocked at the number of people that we know that are 18, 19, 20, 25, don't have a driver's license. Are you kidding me? By the time we was 11 or 12, we was already begging for opportunities to drive. By the time we were 13, we were driving. And then when you hit your 15th birthday, you got to go try to be legal. And uh, I remember getting in trouble. Or I thought I was going to get in trouble. I pulled up in my mom's little Subaru station wagon. I pulled up at driver's edge. Sears 
it's now some Christian bookstore, some Christian bookstore up there in Irving, but it was Sears Driving School. And I pulled up, five speed, put it thing in neutral, killed the motor, stuck it in first gear, pulled the thing, opened the door, and there was this kid looking at me. And he said, aren't you in my driver's ed class? I said, yeah. And his mom started saying something. I just went inside real fast, pretending like I couldn't hear. And so, uh, you know, I've always been good at playing the dumb fat kid. We just, I, I don't know, and I just, I just went in. But, you know, if you're going to drive or you're going to cook, you're going to do, I, I just like to know how things work. And uh, we lived in government-subsidized apartments if we weren't homeless. And, and so I didn't know how to do a lot of stuff as a kid, but I could drive. And so wanted to know how the car worked. Want to know how, I, I want to know how to cook. And uh, I, I moved out when I was 17. So I didn't even know how to cook. I didn't even know how that worked. Um, I, I, now, I, you know, I like, to, I like to install light fixtures. I like to install ceiling fans. Uh, I like to know how all that stuff works. You can get bit if you don't. Uh, you don't know how it works exactly. And so, but I ask a lot of questions, and if people are doing something, I like to watch and figure out what they're doing so I can know how things work. Knowing how things work gives you confidence to get through life. Somebody says, oh, something's wrong, and you go, ah, it's no big deal. Car's overheating a little bit. One of the ladies uh, came in today to pick up her kid from the daycare, and she said, my car's overheating. And I said, how far do you have to go? And she didn't have to go but a few miles. And I said, you know, you might consider turning on the heater. Just roll down all your windows and, uh, and just turn the heater on. And she's like, why does that work? I said, if I understand correctly, it draws heat away from the block. And, uh, and I said, and you, you, you'll probably make it where you're at, but if it, if it keeps climbing, now you need to stop. And uh, so anyway, she, she made it where she was going. But it's good when you have a little bit of confidence on what's, what to expect. And you know, it's not any different in our spiritual life. If you look here again, I want to key in there on verse 28. The Apostle Paul, he says, And we know that all things work together for good. Now, the caveat is there. It says, To them that love, uh, to them that love God, to them that are called according to His purpose. So, if you're saved, how could you not love God? So, I believe he's talking about for saved folk, who God has a plan for their life, all things work together for good. Now, I know good things work together for good. They're good things. They're good things. Good things come along and uh, they're encouraging. Good things come along and they're rewarding. Good things come along and they're a blessing. I don't like bad things. But bad things come along. Bad times come. The longer we live, the more of our friends and loved ones we have to bury. The, the more relationships get broken, the, the harder it is to watch uh, young people making crazy decisions. And, and today they have the tools to take those, like we made dumb decisions. We didn't have the budget or the technology. We just kind of hurt ourselves and maybe the people directly around us. Nowadays, they have the tools and, I mean, you can multiply the pain uh, that, that's caused from some of the stupidity that happens. And um, so the longer we live, when you see bad things, Man, it's hard to see sometimes how those can be good. But bad things can be good. Sometimes you have to look hard for a silver lining. I got saved as a result of a six-week-old nephew dying. I, I would never wish that. I would never want that. But I'm thankful for a preacher that came into that bad situation in our family, and I was able to get saved. We have gone to, we've done funerals for people. I remember going out to uh, East Texas with my father-in-law to visit a lady named Denna Bussey. And Denna was staying at her niece's house and she asked to see us. Man, we drove out there to East Texas and uh, we went in and saw her and she woke up for us and, uh, and she hadn't been awake very much and she talked with us a little bit and uh, we were getting ready to leave out. And my father-in-law said, you know, we love you, Miss Denna, and he gave her a hug, and, and I was over there, and I was like, Miss Denna, we love you, and he gave her a hug, and I and, uh, thought she was going to hang me out there, and, and, but I said, love you, Miss Denna, and she said, love you, preacher. I love you, preacher. Those were the last words she ever spoke. I love you, preacher, and we left, and as we left out, she just drifted off to sleep, and within a couple hours, she passed away, and got to go do her funeral, and, and, and it was tough, and it was a rowdy crowd, man. This family was awesome. 
I mean, two Texas Rangers came in with a guy in shackles. Shing, 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 shing. And I was off in the room. You know, they put a preacher off. Like, we'll give you a place to study. I'm in there studying away, and I hear, shing, 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 shing. I said, like, what in the world is that? Somebody wearing spurs out here in East Texas? And the door popped open. And there's two cowboys with guns on and badges. And, and here's this outfit in the middle with, with all that. And uh, I said, no, come on in, come on in. And they, they had to search him. And then they just told him that they'd take the leg shackles off, but they weren't taking the hand shackles off. And they, he said, if people want to hug you, you lean into them. You don't reach over them. And they said, he, there's two ways out of here. And they said, I, I'm, he's at one door and I'm at the other door. Don't make us accidentally kill some of your family trying to kill you on an escape. And I was like, we just doing a funeral, y'all. <laughs> and it was his mama. So one of Dennis' boys was in the pen. And I don't know how he got out. I, we've known a lot of folks in the pen uh, didn't get to get out for mama's funeral. But anyway, he got to get out and uh, started preaching. And eight people... By the end of it, eight people got saved. The preacher that was out there, he did the, read the eulogy and all that. And uh, I, Brother Ed, and I was out there. We had a missionary with us, Brother Cantrell. And he was in the back. And if something crazy happens, you always want to have a witness with you, you know. And so I was watching and everything was going on. And I was right in the middle of preaching about Denna and how that she used to come and right in here. And she would always sit right about where Miss Gweldy is. And she always had different people with her. And I said, she always had different people having to give her a ride. And I said, you gave her a ride. I, I remember when you got saved. And I said, and, and I remember when you gave her a ride. And I remember when you got saved. I said, you guys realize what Denna was doing. She didn't need a ride. We'd have come and got her. She just wanted you guys to hear the gospel. And I said, in, all, in Denna's heart, she was brokenhearted because you bunch of outfits wouldn't go to church. I said, so she got you one at a time. I said, how many people came to our church and, and accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior? And probably six or seven people raised their hand. And I said, all Denna wanted to do was get you under the sound of the gospel. And guess what? Denna did it again. Because here we are. And man, we just preached. And, and so I, I, man, I was like, we're in the thick of it. I said, this is, this is Denna's last chance to get you guys into church. And I said, there she is. She's in the box. And, and, and dinner's going to be gone. And, and what are you going to do? Does anybody love you to get you under the sound of the gospel? And, and so I, I kept preaching and preaching. And one lady raised her hand. And I was like, um, okay. Um, yes, ma'am. And she said, uh, I, I believe I need to be saved. I said, yes, ma'am. In just a few minutes, I'm going to give an invitation. And you can come. And she put that hand up. She said, I think I need to get saved now. And I said, um, Brother Ed, Brother Ed, can you show this dear one right here how to be saved? He said, I sure can. Man, Brother Ed got up and he, he grabbed her and off they went over to that little room where, where, where they, they were going to do the strip search after church, they promised him, and on the, on the guy. And he, he goes over there and, and I was like, mercy sakes alive. Okay. I said, hey, Dinna did it again. And so kept preaching, kept preaching. And I told him, I said, hey, Brother Ed is here. I'm here. There's a missionary in the back. Listen, if you need to be saved, I'm telling you, some of you guys, this is your last chance. You're never going to hear the gospel again. You need to be saved. You need somebody to show you in the Bible. We would love to show you in the Bible. And so, anyway, I, I went to the head of the, like this is the casket right here. You always got to stand right here. You stand right here and look all official. And they come by and they look in there. And then, and then if they lean over and start doing weird stuff, it's kind of like the preacher's job to kind of reach over and you act like you're petting them on the back, but really you're pulling them off. And, and they was trying to hug and everybody wants to kiss and everybody, you know, doing stuff. So, you know, you just kind of, oh, it's going to be okay. You talk to folks, you pray with folks, trying to encourage them. So we, get, we got them all out and uh, just about had everybody through the line and everything was going good and the ushers were over here, the, the pallbearers, they're getting ready to take her out there to the, to the car waiting and, um, and all of a sudden, Brother Ed rushes out and he goes, seven more! I go, seven more what? I thought the, I thought the convict got loose and something happened, I didn't know. I said, seven more what? He said, seven more people came over there in that room. He goes, I talked to each one of them individual now. I talked to each one of them individual, and every one of them got saved. I said, praise God. Praise God. I was all excited. 
I went outside. The, the pallbearers were right here, and the, and the, and, and the, and the um, funeral director, he said, are, are y'all ready? I said, almost, hold on. And I went and I busted open the door where the, where the hearse was. And all the people was out there. I said, hey, did it, did it again. And <laughs> seven people, eight people got saved total. Eight people got saved at a funeral. At a funeral. We had a double funeral, father and son. We led three people to the Lord right here. You just never know. God can take bad things and use them for good. Amen. God can do, take bad things and use them for good. You know, sometimes bad things will toughen you up. Sometimes, you know, our kids will come to us and they're like, Dad, I think I broke my arm. You know, and I'm like, it'll feel better when it quits hurting. You know, just spit on it, put some mud on it. It'll be fine in a little bit, you know, maybe. Sometimes bad things happen and you know what? They humble us and we, when we need to be humbled. Sometimes bad things come along and help us grow. They help us grow. I think about that, that tree that, that was in the, in the vineyard there. And the owner of the vineyard came and talked to the keeper. He said, this one right here, it's not bearing any fruit. Why cumbereth it the ground? And thank God for a merciful keeper. He said, you know, you know what? I'll just dig about it and dung it. And if it bear fruit, well. And if not, we'll chop it down. Sometimes we don't realize that when bad things come in our life, it could be that the keeper said, hold on. Let, let's just dig about the roots and let's just dung it. And dung is what you think it is. And if you wonder why sometimes there's so much dung in your life, man, my life's full of dung. I don't know what to do. Hey, you got a bunch of dung. Hey, it may just be that you need to grow. You may need to grow up. You may need to start bearing fruit. You may need to do, do what God tells you to do. But there's a reason dung is in your life. All things. The Bible says all things. And I just think it means if you study the Hebrew out real deep and you go back to the Greek, it means all things. It means all things. Good, bad. You know, sometimes um, if we're not careful, even the good things can become a problem. Good things come along. Too many good things come along. We're allowed to get pride. Or we'll get distracted from what we need to be doing. We need to be careful because good things can be bad things. We need to see things for what they are and allow God to grow us. Sometimes things come along and they're so weird, we don't know if they're good or bad. We don't understand what just happened. But I'm telling you, that's when you need to stop and really be praying. You just go, Lord, I don't, I don't know what that was. I, I don't know if that was good or bad. I, that's confusing. I don't understand what's happening, Lord. I, I don't know. But I know this, uh, Isaiah 55 is still in the book. And in verses 8 and 9, God talks about his ways being higher than our ways and his thoughts than our thoughts. As, as, talking about for, as, as, as far as earth is up to heaven, that's how far apart they are. And uh, he said, his ways are higher than our ways. You know, sometimes things come along. And you know what that falls under the category of? Just all things. It's just all things. You know, all things work together for good. If, if, you're, if you're saved, if you love God, God has a plan for your life, all things. Now, sometimes we have to stop and just ask God. You say, now, God, that, that was rough. God, that one, that one hurt. And I don't know how that was good, and I don't know what that meant for good. But God, I, I'm here, and I'm listening. I'm paying attention. Hey, I'm, I'm writing this one down because I don't want to ever have to go through that again. You ever failed a test and you get to take it again? That's what I tell my kids about ninth grade. Like, hey, they were struggling with ninth grade. I said, do you hate it? Like, we hate it, Dad. I was like, well, you're going to do it again. You've got to pass it. The more you hate it, you just, you just got to pass it. You better find some way to enjoy it. you got a trick. It's like trying to get a kid to eat, you know, some, some salad or something. You better, you better stick a macaroni and cheese on that and eat it all at the same time. Cut a piece of meat off of there and just chew it all at the same time, you know. Because, hey, you're going to sit there. Mama ain't playing. Daddy don't care. You can go to bed hungry for all I care. Mama cares. She's up in here cooking that stuff, and, and if you don't like it, you're going to hurt her feelings, and we're going to have a problem. So you just, you're just going to eat, boy. Just mix something good with it. What do you like on that plate? Find something you like. Man, just mix it all together. And, you know, it's, it's that way in life. Some people, all they, they just focus on the bad. 
And they just stare at the bat. I, I got this problem right here. I got this problem. I'm like, but you got all these blessings. Yeah, but I got this problem. You better, you better look at your blessings and walk through this knowing you got ten blessings. You got one problem. You're way better off than most folk. And that one problem, listen, you just got to get past it. If you fail that problem, you're going to see that same problem over and over again until you finally do pass. It's just good to pass it. It's just good to pass it. I like what the Apostle Paul says. I'm talking about how things work. Good things, bad things, confusing things, things we don't understand. They all work in our life to help us, to make us better, to make us useful to God. We are, we are created for the praise of His glory. And our purpose is to glorify Him. And we can't glorify Him, and we're not going to glorify Him if we sit around and whine about all of our problems. Nor are we going to glorify Him if we sit around and brag about all of our blessings like we had something to do with it. We need to give Him, I like that song, Kurt LeBeau sings a song. And I'll put it in, in there, and, and Kurt, Kurt LeBeau, he can sing. He, he can't see nothing. He's blind, but he can sing. Man, he says... Give him the glory for what he's done in your life. Man, he just, and he talks about just give him glory for what he's done in your life. You know, for the good things, for the bad things, and the things you didn't understand. See, God can get glory if we will just enjoy and praise him for the good things, if we will endure and praise him even for the bad things, and if we will sort it out and, and learn and grow even from the things we don't necessarily understand right now. There have been times years later that we're just like, oh, that's why that happened. You just never know. You never know. I like what the Apostle Paul, he, he was talking about in Acts 20 and 24. He says, but none of these things move me. Neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy in the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. Paul had just finished talking. Listen, he had been sailing around. He had, he had had people come. He had had people go. He had seen people get saved. He had had people want to kill him. And he said, none of these things move me. None of these things move me because the end game for me is I want to be able to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And if I'm going to preach the gospel, none of these things can move me. Oh, they're making me popular. I could be a big pastor over here and I could do this and have a great big old church and it's going to be wonderful. No, that ain't what God called you to do, Paul. See, you're going to have to travel around because and we need you to get to a bunch of countries and, and, and get, a help, get a bunch of work started, get a bunch of churches started, and then we need you to write back to spank those churches, to love those churches, to instruct those churches, to encourage those churches, you know, like Romans, maybe like Corinthians, first they got spanked, then he loved on them. Galatians, the church at Ephesus, Philippian church, Colossians, all the churches at Colossae. Listen, Paul had a work to do. And had he stopped in one place when the good things were going. Oh, everybody loved him here. Why not just stay where you loved? Because God needs you where you're hated. God needs you to be chased. God needs you shipwrecked. God needs you to get bit by a snake. God needs you to be lied about. God needs you in prison. Paul, at the very end, he wasn't whining. He said, none of these things move me. None of these things move me. Neither count I my life dear unto myself. What if you die? I'll beat you to heaven. Don't threaten me with heaven. You know how competitive I am. Somebody says, you need to do this so you don't die. I'm like, I'll beat you to heaven. Hey, if I live, we're going to have a good time serving the Lord. Or we're going to have some rough times serving the Lord. We're going to serve the Lord. But when I die, I'm going to stand before him in his presence. Maybe, wouldn't it be nice if we were still, it's still the blood that saves from sin. 
It's still the blood. Man, you get raptured up out of this thing. That cleanses within. Man, wouldn't that be nice just right in the middle of a verse of, it's still the blood. Just get raptured out of this thing. Can't count your life. Listen, if you count your life too dear unto yourself, you're going to get distracted. You're going to get moved. You're going to get moved from the position. God may have you in a place where you're going to have to take some punches where the devil's shooting out fiery darts. You better have on the whole armor. Just put on the whole armor and don't let anything move you. None of these things move me. Neither count on my life dear unto myself because I have a purpose so that I might finish my course with joy. Amen. Isn't that good? You don't have to have happy. Happy's cheap. Happy's a cheap imitation. So that doesn't make me happy. Happy's a cheap imitation for joy. Sex, drugs, and rock and roll. That'll make you happy. Bring you no joy. You can go get drunk. I've seen some happy drunks. Never seen them with joy. See, the joy of the Lord is my strength. <laughs> and I'm feeling kind of strong tonight. It don't matter what. Listen, bad things are going to come. We're going to have sick family members. We're going to, we, we, we lost a, a, an aunt today. But you know what? what? What do you do? Do you sit around and cry about it? You might. It might hurt that bad. But then you pick yourself up and you keep serving the Lord. You just keep doing what you're supposed to do. You say, but I, I don't know. None of these things move me. Listen, God is not calling us to a life of ease. In fact, we're told, we're, we're encouraged that everybody who lives righteously is going to suffer persecution. We're going to suffer. It didn't say notice or experience. Suffer persecution. It's going to be hard times. They're coming. You are either just coming out of a storm, you're in the middle of a storm, or there's one on the horizon. Ain't that an encouragement? I'll tell you that God's bigger than the storms. Amen. Just endure them and give God the glory. Man, there are a lot of people who get saved because they see somebody getting through rough times and they do it with joy. Get all the way through and they go, what are you going to do? I don't know. God will tell me when it's time. Right now, I may just sit down and cry a few minutes and read my Bible and pray a little bit, but I'm okay. Listen, God loves me. I don't understand everything that happens. I don't understand the bad stuff that comes my way. I don't understand why people act a fool. I don't understand all that. But I know God loves me. And I know what he's called me to do. It's just good when you learn how things work. Father in heaven, we love you. We thank you for being good to us. Lord, we thank you that your scriptures tell us how things work. We know that your thoughts and your ways are so far above our thoughts and our ways. But we know good, bad, confusing, all of it. it. It just all works together for good. We know you love us and you want what's best for us. Lord, I pray if there's one here tonight who's not one of yours, maybe they'd come, let us show them in the Bible how to be saved. Lord, we love to tell them what we mean when we sing about it. It's still the blood. We'd love to tell them how that all of sin had come short of the glory of God. We'd Love to tell them that Jesus was on the cross, but not for himself, but for them. We'd love to tell them that there's hope because of the resurrection. And then, Lord, maybe there's some folks that are just coming out of a storm and not sure how to handle it. Or maybe they're right in the middle of the storm and it's hurting. Or maybe they see something coming and it's giving them pause. It's causing some anxiety. I don't know about all that, but I know this. I know you love us, and I know that whatever happens to us, it does work together for good because we are called according to your purpose for our lives. So, Lord, I pray that you'd help us just be responsive to the things that we've read and the things that we've heard. Lord, that we might draw close to you. We ask it in Jesus' name with thanksgiving.